Your stomach is cramping. The kind that says something microscopic just declared war on your intestines. Maybe cholera. Maybe giardia. Maybe it's just dysentery that'll have you fertilizing the ground for a week straight. This isn't the kind you fix with Pepto and wishful thinking. The grid's been down for three weeks. The taps went dry on day five. All those expensive ceramic filters you stockpiled? Clog solid. The nearest stream looks like chocolate milk mixed with whatever died upstream last Tuesday. But you need water. Desperately. In 72 hours without it, your kidneys just shut down. There is no FEMA truck coming. No bottled water delivery. It's just you, a landscape of questionable puddles, and one single question. Which one kills you slower? But here's the thing. For 6,000 years, humans survived without ever knowing bacteria existed. They drank from the same rivers that hippos used as a toilet. They scooped water from muddy holes in the ground, and somehow they didn't all die screaming. Dysentery didn't care if you were a king or a hunter. And if you can learn to read the signs that kept our ancestors alive, you just might make it through this grid-down nightmare with your guts intact. No fancy lab tests, no chlorine tablets. We're going Stone Age. First things first. You have to follow the damn birds before your tongue swells shut. You need to find water that won't kill you immediately. Your ancestors watched. They learned. A zebra finch never ventures more than 20 kilometers from water. Pigeons? They fly straight to their source every single evening like clockwork. Even the bees buzzing past your ear are flying billboards pointing toward hidden springs and seeps. So stand still at dawn. Be patient. Watch the birds, the small ones, the kind that need to drink every day. Track their flight paths until they disappear over a ridge. They are heading to water. That is a guarantee. Look at the ground. Look for animal tracks that are all heading the same way. Kangaroo prints, all pointing in one direction. Dingo trails that suddenly multiply and merge. When multiple species are using the same highway, that's not a coincidence. That is a reliable water source that hasn't killed them yet. And here's a critical warning. If you find a pool of water that's crystal clear but has absolutely nothing living in it, no algae, no insects, no tadpoles, you walk away. You walk away fast. Life wants water. If microorganisms can't survive in it, neither can you. It's either poisoned or it's so heavy with minerals that your kidneys will quit before your thirst does. Birds? Look for fresh tracks in the mud. Look for a patch of green vegetation punching its way through a dead landscape. Follow converging game trails. Hell, even a line of ants marching at dawn is leading you towards moisture. The rule is simple. Animals have been finding safe water for millions of years longer than humans have existed. They are your built-in sensors. Use them. Okay, you found where the animals drink. Great, you are not drinking there. Not yet. Surface water is a game of Russian roulette. Groundwater is your friend. Water that has been filtered through meters of sand, gravel, and rock. The earth has been a water filter since before your ancestors even invented fire. It is slow, it is patient, and it works. Find a dry creek bed. Look for a sandy part on an otter bend. Start digging. Dig down until the ground gets damp, then dark, and then water begins to seep in. It'll be cloudy at first. Don't panic, just let it settle. That water has percolated through natural filtration for weeks, maybe months. The deeper you can dig, the cleaner it's going to get. Aboriginal peoples in Australia would dig soakages several meters deep using nothing but sharpened sticks and wooden bowls. They knew the locations of underground water that white explorers with all their maps and compasses couldn't find. That knowledge kept entire communities alive in deserts where the surface looked utterly dead. If you can't find a creek bed, look for a spring. Water bubbling up from the ground is pre-filtered by geology itself. If it's flowing, that means it's oxygenated. That means beneficial bacteria have already processed it on its way up to you. It's natural disinfection before you even touch it. If you absolutely must use surface water, find flowing water. Fast moving. The faster, the better. 
Stagnant pools are just bacterial playgrounds where nasty organisms throw parties. Running water is still dangerous, but it's self-aerating and less likely to be growing microscopic warfare. And then you follow it upstream, as far as your legs can carry you. The closer you get to the source, the less chance there is that something died or defecated in it before you arrived. Now let's talk about the plants. For 65,000 years, Aboriginal elders have taught that the landscape is talking, if you just know how to listen. See a patch of healthy green vegetation in an otherwise brown and dead landscape? That is subsurface water. Plants do not lie. Their roots are tapping into a source of moisture that you can't see. Dig there. Some species, like the molly eucalyptus, actually store water in their roots. You can dig them up, cut them into sections, and drinkable water will flow out. One section can yield a quart. It sounds disgusting. It tastes like tree. But it will keep you alive. Look for ground that stays damp, even in a drought. Look for insects swarming in one spot at dawn. Look for mud that never seems to fully dry out. That indicates a high water table or underground seepage. This all comes down to a simple principle older than the wheel. Gravity pulls water down. If all else fails, dig in the low spots. Valleys, ravines, depressions in the land. So you found a source. You dug a hole and it filled with water that looks like dirt mixed with more dirt. Patience now becomes a tool of survival. For thousands of years, humans have simply let water sit in a vessel. The ancient Egyptians documented this three and a half thousand years ago. It's called settling. The heavy particles fall to the bottom. The clearer water stays on top. Gravity is the oldest water treatment plant on Earth. You can improve on this. Dig a second pit right next to your murky water source. Let the water seep through the soil between your source and your collection pit. That soil acts as a natural biological and mechanical filter. Bacteria in the soil eat the organic matter. The sand catches the particles. Or you can build your own filter. Find a container, layer gravel on the bottom, then coarse sand, then fine sand on top. Pour your sketchy water through it. It will come out cleaner. Not sterile, cleaner. And yes, boil it if you can. But here's the truth. For most of human history, people did not boil their drinking water. It was impractical. You can't boil every single sip you take throughout the day. Instead, they learned to find sources where boiling wasn't necessary. Moving springs, deep wells, groundwater filtered by the earth. Finally, you have to trust your gut, literally. Your body has 200,000 years of programming that says some waterborne pathogens are survivable. Early humans built up tolerances. Their immune systems adapted to local water sources. Your gut microbiome, even your sanitized modern one, has evolved to handle challenges. You're not immune, but you have defenses, as long as you don't overwhelm them. Choosing the cleanest possible source gives your immune system a fighting chance. It's about choosing better options, not perfect options. Every sip taken from filtered seepage instead of a stagnant pool was another day our ancestors lived and another day their children lived to pass on those water-finding genes. This works because your body is already trying to save you. Your immune system fights pathogens. Your good gut bacteria crowd out the bad stuff. Your kidneys filter. Your liver detoxifies. Finding flowing water, digging for groundwater, letting it settle, all you're doing is reducing the enemy's numbers before the battle begins. Ancient humans weren't immune to dysentery. They died from it, frequently. But the survivors, whose genes you now carry, were the ones who chose better sources. They paid attention to where the animals drink. They understood that a clear flowing spring always beats a stagnant lifeless pool. Evolution selected for the humans who could read these signs. So, there's no municipal plant, no chlorination, no ceramic filter with a warranty, just you, the dirt, and the landscape that our ancestors navigated for 200 millennia without a guidebook. But look at you. You followed the birds to a water source. You dug for groundwater instead of scooping from a brown puddle. You let sand and gravity do the heavy lifting, and you're still hydrated. Your stomach isn't cramping. Not yet.
in a grid-down world, that is a win. As long as you keep finding clean sources, as long as your guts stay quiet, then congratulations. You've just accessed a library of survival knowledge that predates written language itself. But if you ignored all this and just chugged from the first puddle you saw, well, you tried. And out here, trying without knowledge gets you a shallow grave and a warning story for someone else. Now find your next source. There's a long-term survival situation ahead. Dehydration doesn't care about your feelings.